from a major international footballing occasion. Argentina, the world champions, entertaining West Germany, beaten finalists in Mexico City 18 months ago. The setting is the compact Vélez Sarsfield Stadium in Buenos Aires. The match has immense interest with Argentina fielding most of their World Cup winning side, including Diego Maradona. West Germany building for their European Championship campaign next summer. And English eyes, I'm sure, will be charting the progress of Franz Beckenbauer's side. Alongside me, I'm pleased to welcome Ray Clements, the Tottenham and former England goalkeeper, who kept goal for England here in Buenos Aires some 10 years ago now. And I should think, Ray, that you're kept well informed on Argentinian football by your Tottenham teammate, Ozzy Ardiles. Yes, very much. Ozzy keeps in touch with uh, the Argentinian team and uh, he's looking forward to uh, seeing this evening's game as well because uh, there are many fine young Argentinian players on the way up at this present moment in time. Well, just to whet your appetite, a quick look back at the last and most famous of the nine previous meetings between these two great footballing nations, that World Cup final in Mexico. The last chair is there. Valdana, the big man's in there too, floating to the far side, and they did! Brown! Maradona, simple little touch, but a good one to Enrique, and now Valdana, and this could be the break again for Argentina, and he's scored! 2-0! So Prima with the corner, for West Germany and forced in by Rubenigger corner coming in and it's there Vola 2-2 two -two. now Maradona a touch by him but a chance outside played outside by Briegel and there's the reprieve for Argentina for the charge that makes it 3-2 and there are Germans flat on the ground in utter and total despair well Franz Beckenbauer said today we've come here to learn not specifically for revenge West Germany have already played one game on their South American tour and they drew 1-1 with Brazil last Saturday Brazil scored first after 68 minutes, Batista heading in from the corner. The corner taken by Peter and comprehensively missed by the West German goalkeeper Eike Immel. Batista left with an empty net. The match played in Brasilia and West Germany equalised in the very last minute. Stefan Reuter the scorer. The Germans without key strikers Rudi Voller and Klaus Alofs on this trip but Reuter, a utility player from Nuremberg, he did the trick. Brazil won, West Germany won. Argentina include eight of their World Cup winning side, including two of the goal scorers in the final who've been out of action for many months. Jorge Valdana recovered now from hepatitis and Jorge Boruchaga, who's had a serious leg injury. Not surprisingly, West Germany have changed their goalkeeper. Bodo Ildner coming in for Eike Immel, who made that mistake against Brazil on Saturday. He's looking very much Franz Beckenbauer to his younger players, like striker Jürgen Klinsmann, who's winning his second cap, and so too is Frank Ordenovitz from Werder Bremen, the league leaders at the halfway mark in the West German Bundesliga. The referee is Arnaldo Cesar Coelho, who took charge of the 1982 World Cup final. And we'll be back with the kickoff right after a short break. Welcome back to Buenos Aires. The match incidentally being played here in the second stadium in the city. As the first foul is there by Jose Luis Brown. 
because in the River Plate Stadium where the 78 World Cup final was held there was a Sting concert last Friday with a lot of 100,000 crowd actually spilling onto the playing area and so there's a much better surface here Loto Mateus poised for the shot wearing the captain's armband and then playing it wide to Flugler a warm day in Argentina but in the early evening the temperature is dropping and a breeze making it quite palatable for the players Burachaga big crowd guaranteed really by the presence of Diego Maradona and you could just tell what he means to the crowd with the first touch Valdano free kick very much in Maradona territory here but they'll have to wait while Valdano receives some treatment or at least is lifted to his feet by his teammates Maradona played for Napoli against Juventus on Sunday and scored the winning goal with a penalty three minutes from time to maintain his sense of occasion got a plane out of Italy late on Sunday night. Bodo Ildner winning only his third cap in West Germany's goal. Valdano is OK. And the Maradona decoy. It was Burachaga who thundered it just over the top. I should think, Ray, that Ildner really had his eyes set on Maradona and was expecting the more obvious ploy. I would think so, and I would think that was the last thing he was hoping for at the start of this international was to have to face a free kick from that distance. I'm sure he'll be looking, and he's so new to the international scene, he'll be looking to get a touch of the ball and do something right very early on because playing out in Argentina, I think he's quite happy that's gone over the top of the bar there because uh, playing out in Argentina is a very, very intimida intimidating atmosphere, that's a certainty. And certainly in this stadium where the crowd is much closer to the pitch than at the River Plate. Flugler wearing number three from Bayern Munich. Rolf. Hola. Mateus, another of the Bayern players with tremendous range in his passing and he picks out his teammate Flugler here. Mateus and Flugler getting a good angle for his cross and Pompido hauled it in well. So his first touch is a secure one. His distribution is good too. And I do apologise if you're hearing one or two of the other commentators on our microphones. Maradona. Herget wearing number five is likely to be the free player at the back for Franz Beckenbauer's side. Batista, the bearded pirate-like figure in midfield for Argentina. Here's Cuchufo. Sensini winning his first cap. He was called in at the last minute when Ricardo Giusti failed a fitness test today. Oh, 
Burachaga, who plays his football in France, but he hasn't played much of it this season because of a knee injury last May. But Carlos Pilado determined, really, to get as many of his World Cup winning side together. Obviously, partly to give West Germany a genuine test here, but also for the commercial factors in Argentina. They just don't come out to watch any old international here because even when you're world champions, you've got to have the leading lights like Maradona, like Valdano, like Burruchaga. And Argentina have only played some five internationals since they won the World Cup 18 months ago. Bodo Ildner is also in only his first season as a regular in the Bundesliga. He plays for Cologne, where he's taken over from Tony Schumacher, who rather quit his pitch with his club and his country by some rather strange revelations in an autobiography. Reuter. Erget, un libro. Reuter, otra vez Erget. Herget. Schwabel. Schwabel wearing number 11. Presionando Argentina, como recién le decía Enrique Moltoni, no permite la salida. Early moments when you are the away team in an international, even though it's a friendly one like this. Yes, especially for the Germans, because they are a young side, as Beckenbauer said, he's here to learn. Uh, and they're building for the European Championships, and as I say, it is a difficult place to play in Argentina. And the Argentinians have got a very strong side out this evening, so it is uh, very important that uh, the Germans get a few passes together and get a little bit of confidence. And get in one or two tackles on Maradona. Rodriguez. He's the top scorer in Argentinian domestic football this season. And his club side, Deportivo Español, are leading the way in the table. And he's a scorer of spectacular goals, we're told. Check there on the substitutes. El técnico Carlos Vilardo, Imel, Busbald, Foda, Breme, Ostatter, el técnico Beckenbauer, los suplentes de Alemania. Mateus. Mateus. With an interesting ball Colo forward Colo into the heart Colo of Argentina's Colo defending. Fabri came across Le with bien Olaf Ton making the forward run from midfield. Cuando corta Fabri la, pegó, la pelota pega en Olaf Ton, el jugador de Alemania. Era saque de arco, él no observó ese detalle y ha señalado tiro de esquina para el equipo alemán. 8 minutos 30 segundos del primer tiempo. Jürgen Kohler, de Vélez. La the number four, the centre back, also from Cologne, who scored Orte half a dozen Nevitz, goals in the Bundesliga this season. De la derecha, viene con He's well forward. Ruggeri, el remate de Mateus. Mateus has made a habit of burying those from that sort of range. He had to take it instantly on the volley. And Pompido would hardly have got a sight of it as it sped past him, but high and wide. Ray, I think it was the Boca Juniors stadium that you played at, but it was similarly oppressive for a visiting goalkeeper. That's right, the fans are right on top of you and uh, we can hear the noise that they're making here. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's difficult to hear yourself think over the noise that's going on in the stadium at the moment. Uh, and it's non-stop. They don't mind whether, uh, how the game's going. They just never stop this, this incessant noise. This is West Germany's seventh international already this season. And they are unbeaten. Jürgen Kola. On from Flugla. Rolf. La duda, Erge. Cola having to hurry there. Cola, cuando venía llegando Valdano. 
Reuter. Mateus, Mateus, who in the World Cup final was given the job of man for man marking Suave. Maradona. And that's too far ahead of Mateus, who played in that match with a broken hand that was kept a secret even from some of the players in the German team. Sensini, Burachaga taking over. Rodriguez and Valdano and Maradona really making a three-man strike force for Argentina. Fabri got in quickly then against Stefan Reuter, the scorer of West Germany's goal in Brasilia last Saturday. In West Germany's run, of course, this season, they can point to a 3-1 victory over England. Reuter. Odenovic coming across the edge of the area rather than really make an incisive run. Puruchaga and it was a combination of Rolf and Flugler who got back. Quite a festival night in Buenos Aires where they know how to celebrate. Maradona. Rolf. Mateus. Pulled down. And the yellow card shown to Nestor Fabri. So a friendly it may be build, but nothing too friendly about the attempt to halt Mateus then. And he was accelerating away past Fabri. And Jerry losing out. Rolf. From by a Labour Cousin. Olaf Tom, who is regarded in West Germany as the Boris Becker of football. Precocious talent, as you can see. And Klinsmann was going for an overhead kick there, and in fact, he scored this season for his club Stuttgart, what they regard in West Germany as their goal of the season, with one such overhead kick. Made no contact that time. Well, I think so far, it's, there's no real pattern to the game yet emerges. The both sides are. Uh, are pushing on tight to each other and uh, nobody's really getting the space to play at this present moment in time but uh, I'm sure that uh, the longer it goes on and the more space Maradona will get I'm sure he'll make it for himself then we'll see something develop and Maradona of course is such a good team player as well that he can make it for others that's right that's why he's, he's obviously the greatest player in the world because not only does he have fine individual skills but he's prepared to work for other people as well uh, as he has proved at his club in uh, Napoli. Napoli leading the way in the Italian league at this stage of the season, the champions last year, of course, under Maradona's influence. well forward and Rodriguez it's a real chance for Rodriguez Baldano and how did it stay out Rodriguez can't believe it Baldano is down in disgust and West Germany survived but only just with 14 minutes gone Ilma did well to stop the first shot after Rodriguez hesitated and then Luck was with the goalkeeper and again as Ruggieri came in at the back post
Ray Clements. Well, that was a great save by the goalkeeper because he stood on his feet and, and uh, gave the forward no chance at all. Didn't commit himself, made it difficult for the forward. But in the end, Rodriguez panicked uh, and didn't finish anywhere near as clinically as he should have done. Uh, and after he made the initial save, Eldner actually got back and got a half block on the uh, second sh shot as well. So, I mean, uh, that would have done his confidence the world of good because uh, a lot of experienced goalkeepers wouldn't have stood up as long as he did against Rodriguez. Rodriguez, remember, the man in form in Argentina. The top scorer in their domestic competition. But maybe that came to him a little bit early in his very first international. Um, I think he should have been quite happy to get a chance at international level <laughs> that early in the game. It was such a clear-cut opportunity. Um, it's easy to make excuses, I know, but uh, I think in that position, any, anybody, I think even one of the defenders would have been happy in that position to try and score. The shadows begin to lengthen in Buenos Aires. Always a great sense of athleticism about West German teams. Reuter looking for Olaf Ton. Schwabel waiting in the middle, so too was Klinsmann. It's a German throw. There's a few volunteers to take it. It's going to be Mateus. Curler. And that's an edgy ball, and you don't give it away to Maradona. Rodriguez. Maradona again, found by Boruchaga. And there is some rather nervy defending in front of Ilkner, but not by the goalkeeper himself. Kuchufo was the player waiting by the far post, had the cross been pulled back a little. Far post from Maradona's point of view, that is. That's Guido Buchwald, who's a centre-back, and I just wonder whether there's a problem in there for West Germany. But a tremendous run here from Mateos, and it's Pompido's turn to go down and cut it out. Nothing's changed from the World Cup. He still takes about ten, ten steps every time he gets the ball. Neri Pompido, who had a quite horrible accident in training back in the summer when he caught his wedding ring on a hook that was holding the net on a goal, and it pulled the ring into his finger right down to the bone, and there were fears that his career would be over. The concern, though, on the face of Buchwald is whether he's going to be an early substitute for West Germany. Batista. First header from Rodriguez, the second from Valdano. Maradona looking quite trim. He's lost some weight over the last couple of months. Mateus, of course, always looks athletic. Flugler's tackle on Rodriguez. Powerfully built striker. And referee Coelho saying to Buchwald, you either come on or you get a top on. Because he must be a distraction there in the green shirt. Kuchufo playing is playing here on his home ground, fellow Sarsfield. Batista for Argentina, with 20 minutes gone, Argentina nil, West Germany nil. In this rematch of the 1986 World Cup final. 
There is Carlos Pilado. And Franz Beckenbauer keeping his comments. Soto Voce. From the depths of the West German winter to the sunshine of Argentina's summer. It's quite an adjustment for Beckenbauer's team. But as he says, it's part of their education. And I'm sure that many of them here will feature in the European Championship in the summer, like Klinsmann. And Pompido called into action again. West Germany certainly not concentrating just on a defensive posture early on. They've had their moments at the halfway point in the first half. And that was Klinsmann against the post. The joint leading scorer in the Bundesliga at their midwinter break, the Stuttgart striker. And nearly in his second international, his first goal for his country. Another corner for West Germany. It's beyond Klinsmann this time. Brought away by Brown. It's interesting seeing a couple of the West German corners because speaking to Ozzy before the game, uh, he mentioned to me about Pompidou that he said if he has a weakness, it is in dealing with crosses. Everything else about his game is solid and secure, but he has a problem with those. And two of the corners that the West Germans have put in now, one has been a scramble which they've managed to clear, and there we've just seen another uh, ball which fell just around the six-yard box and the ball's headed against the post. So uh, possibly Ozzy's right, but uh, he does have a problem dealing with crosses. Or well, to be fair to him, the balls that are being knocked in are being bent in viciously. Maradona we saw a moment or two ago, having to live with life with a marker in close attendance. It's Rolf. Now, was that a push by the player coming back, or Denovic? Not given. Mateus, who's taken over the captaincy on this tour from Alofs. Broken up by Sensini, Fabri. Boruchaga, who's made a very quick recovery indeed. They thought he'd be out until February. So Curler is taking Rodriguez, Herget the sweeper. Kuchufo, no one to the right of him, and Herget able to plug the gap. It must be quite difficult for a player like Herget to live up to the standards set by his international team manager. Germany had quite a problem finding a successor to Franz Beckenbauer as a player. And they reckon that Herget was the 14th to fill that role. But Beckenbauer is clearly satisfied with him because he keeps picking him to do this job. He's winning his 30th cap tonight. His sweeper for Argentina is Brown. Maradona. There. Boruchaga. Batista. Now Cochufo. He's away here, and 
West Germany trying to get players into the middle and very nearly capitalising on a mistake by Sensini who was covering quite properly the run of Olaf Ton but lost control and Pompido came to the rescue I think in fairness he tried to play it back to the keeper there didn't he and uh, came off his shin and the keeper was exceptionally brave there exceptionally brave went in there where it's very easy to get hurt uh, and a safe pair of hands getting to it it's a game of tactics and technique rather than blood and thunder with the occasional menacing sortie from each side and West Germany working the offside trap there it's good to see Valdano back he's been a credit to football wherever he's played he's still a Real Madrid player Though he'll find it hard to get into that side. Now he's in full working order again. Mateus, who's worked the touch lines on both sides in this first half. Flugler. Broken up by Batista. Rodriguez wanted too long to turn and Mateus was snapping away at him and won it back for West Germany I think the Argentinians at the moment are looking a bit like a side that have not really had time to repair together not had long together and uh, players coming in from abroad not knowing the way the uh, team has been playing before they've come back and they seem a little bit disjointed they can't really get uh, their team pattern together really at this present moment in time it's a rather weak cross from Schwabel one of the Nuremberg players on the side they've been an emerging force in the Bundesliga this season Nuremberg in fifth place and one or two of their number have caught the eye of Franz Beckenbauer like Reuter and Schwabel and Dieter Eckstein a striker who's one of the substitutes here played back by Keller he was being fouled by Rodriguez Baldano just passing on the advice as to where the free kick should be taken from and Herget with the confidence to strike it with the outside of his right foot across his own penalty area was Beckenbauer like Kula Kugler oh, Denovitz was trying to turn Kuchufo free kick already taken by Argentina for Ruchaga with that rather leggy stride of his. Cuchufo given away. Shirley quite happy to wait for Argentina's mistakes. For Ruchaga again. gets across well, it's an expression that gives nothing away but Maradona still with the ability to get the ball in even as he was fouled that extraordinary feel for the ball with the left foot but the whistle had gone for an Argentina free kick I was just thinking to myself what a good job that Roth had done on Maradona. Uh, 
he's given him no space at all uh, in this first half so far uh, and in fact again admired the discipline of the Germans especially their marking because they just follow men everywhere so here's Burachago with the free kick out by Odenovitz chased by Mateus often hear England managers talking about the problems of getting teams prepared and it is a, a genuine complaint really for all international managers in a way the opening half an hour or so here has been almost like a workout for the two teams and hopefully as they get to know each other and get the feel of the play better the spectacle will increase as the match goes on I'm sure that applies to goalkeepers learning to operate with defenders as well. Well, that's right, yes. I mean, obviously, uh, Pompidou has got most of the, uh, the back forward he's used to in front of him, um, and he seems quite confident with them. But uh, certainly it takes time to work with your back four and, and to get to know what their strengths and weaknesses are. Rodriguez. Klinsmann working back, and he's got a turn of pace. Jürgen Klinsmann. Repositioning in the middle now, and there's a disappointing cross from Tom. From Mateus, I apologise, on the far side. And most out of character. Batista. Maradona quite prepared to battle for the high ball, but really his lack of inches make that sort of pass towards him not the most sensible approach. Kola, that was a good effort. Pompido had a good sight of it. But West Germany trying to break the shape of the game so far with a defender advancing, but this is Borachaga doing the advancing now for Rodriguez. And her get there again. on Schwabel but this was the moment where Rodriguez thought he got another side of goal and that's possibly the difference between the league that he's used to playing in international football and in a league game he'd have probably possibly got that second touch at this class of international football you don't get a second touch you have to take it when it comes to you Argentina, who've won only one of five internationals since that World Cup win. And that was against Ecuador in the South American Championship. Played last summer. Klinsmann. But once again, he's shown, Ray, that he's got an extra gear, Jürgen Klinsmann, the bon blonde central striker from Stuttgart. Yes, I think he's possibly been the one German player that stood out from the rest in this first half in terms of when he's got the opportunity to run at people and run past people. He does have that extra yard of pace to get the, knock the ball past people and get himself past them as well because it's, uh, it's one thing in this sort of game to get the ball past but then you've got to get your body past as well. Right up. And again, Batista with that timing of the tackle that makes him such an effective anchor man in midfield there wasn't similar timing in the exchange that tried to free Maradona I think Batista is, a, is an excellent player he reminds me a lot of Peter Reid at Everton not with his hairstyle or the colour of his hair but uh, with the way he plays he's always there to pick up any little bits that are around and very rarely gives the ball away and he's always there to prompt players and to encourage them and to, and to win the ball in dangerous situations Mateus looking to lift his side 
Jerry, Jerry happy to let it run. Fabric. Well, that all came really from Valdano and Fabri. Not quite working it out together on the far side. And West Germany with a lesser share of the ball in the first half. When they have got forward, they've not been frightened to shoot. And it's never a bad idea to shoot from distance when, as we can see now, Pompidou, the sun is shining right in his eyes. And when you get shots from distance like that, sometimes the ball can be deceiving when it's coming out of the sun. Um, so sometimes you see more goals scored from a, from a long distance with the sun in the keeper's eyes. And they never seem to wear hats. Uh, whereas in England, we'd, we'd probably put, uh, put the cap on, but out there they don't seem to bother. Maybe they don't want to disturb the hair, I'm not too sure. Carlos Pilado will certainly be hoping for an improvement from Argentina in the second half. The end is very much on the home side to dictate the tempo. Maradona. Away by Curla. And Mateos. With a sprinter's pace there. We're moving towards stoppage time. Batista in the right place again. Burachaga. Sold Rodriguez short. And Odenovitz. Can he go around the goalkeeper? No. There was certainly a suspicion of offside. And in fact, the flag was up and it wouldn't have counted for Odenovitz. But I think he would have liked the satisfaction of putting it in in any case. Well, we've, too, we've seen, as the, as the first half finishes, we've seen two excellent examples of a goalkeeper in a one against one situation. How long to stand up and make it difficult for the forward. And both goalkeepers have done it, well, couldn't have done it any better than the way they have done. Uh, to be fair, like, I didn't think it was offside, but uh, uh, we have to, we have to uh, listen to the men in black, don't we? So, in some ways, a disappointing first half in the Velo Southfield Stadium in Buenos Aires. Diego Maradona's team not really able to impose themselves on the, the game as yet. But Klinsmann did hit the post for West Germany. That's the closest we've come. We'll take a short break. Join us for the second half. Welcome back to Buenos Aires. It's Argentina nil, West Germany nil. The tenth meeting between these two countries, one of which took place in England in 1966 at Villa Park. The goalless draw in the group stages of the 1966 World Cup. Diego Maradona come back onto the pitch for the start of the second half where he was surrounded by photographers. Makes you wonder what his lifestyle must be like. He's like a Pied Piper, but one who's followed him he's not too pleased about is Wolfgang Rolf, who's really had the upper hand in a key duel in the match so far. And Klinsmann here for West Germany has looked the most lively forward. for a moment and a good advantage played by the referee Arnaldo Coelho from Brazil this is Rodriguez taking on Herget and then Flugler who clears comfortably Klinsmann met by Cuchufo Sancini misjudging the header, Valdano came in behind him. Schwabel, who's worked hard in midfield for West Germany, but has given the ball away on a number of occasions. Maradona, and they all draw to him. And 
That was a genuine break by Sensini on the far side, who benefited from the attentions paid to Maradona there. But couldn't deliver the cross. And it was a genuine opening for Argentina, and there haven't been many of them so far in this game. Rodriguez and Burachaga waiting in the middle. They'll have to wait a bit longer. Pichufo onto the head of Herget. No foul. Ruggeri, the player, went down. Here's Flugler. And the Germans look to break with Mateus, and that was an important challenge by Fabri. Because Mateus was about to get up ahead of steam. It is amazing the discipline of these West German markers. Rolf is sticking like a leech to Maradona. Yes, he has. Even, even as far as to, uh, there's been situations in the game where Rolf could have tackled other players and got the ball himself. And in fact, has, has not even bothered to go near the ball. Just, he just wants to be near Maradona all the game. Um, and it's the same with uh, uh, Flugler, who is, who is marking Rodriguez. And Rodriguez in his first international is finding that quite hard going as well. Here's Fabri. Batista with everything ahead of him. And Rodriguez! Well, he had to take it quickly as the ball dropped from the first header. Yes, it drops him here. It drops him. It tries to side foot volley it, but uh, it just doesn't seem to be his evening so far. In from Reuter. Mateus with an acrobatic flick. Flugler. Whether it was a shot or an attempted cross, it caused a little fumble for Pompido at the near post. Flugler on his way back. He was the spare man after Mateus saw him and found him cleverly. It was a lovely touch from Mateus, wasn't it? But that's one of the few occasions that players have got in wide, wide positions and actually put in a good cross. There's times on both, both sides have got into good attacking positions and in wide positions, uh, and the ball's been picked out very easily by defenders in the middle. It was interesting in that little flurry there on the far side by West Germany that Rolf came forward and Maradona didn't come back with him. Yes, he must have been very confident that we're going to finish with the strike on goal, otherwise he wouldn't have left him that far. <laughs> Mateus, Klinsmann, Fabri jumping with him and beating him. Baldano, nice control on the chest by Sensini. And it's Maradona this time faced by Curla. He couldn't stop him. Borachaga wasn't quite sure, I think, when the pass was coming, or even if it was coming. He was caught looking over his shoulder. Traditionally, Argentina do play a short passing game with bags of skill. With the odd explosion of temperament. They're looking stronger now. Here he is, Diego Armando Maradona. The appeals are denied. A strong and vastly experienced referee didn't bow here to the baying of the crowd. Herget, the defender involved, and he might feel that he had a little bit of fortune. Maradona has dismissed the incident and is now concentrating on taking the corner. Away by Olaf Top. The more you see.
see a penalty appeal throw with the benefit of slow motion. It makes you never want to be a referee. No, that's very true. It's a, it's a nightmare job, and I, and I felt myself that wasn't a penalty. I think Maradona wrapped his, his legs around Berge uh, as he forced, his, uh, forced himself in the box. Retrieving done here by Jorge Valdano. Borachaga! And Ilsner again with handling to admire. West Germany finding it a little bit heavy going at the moment. Borachaga wasted no time with the shot, which was hard and true. It was a great save because he was at full stretch. It nearly slipped away from him, but he did really well to keep hold of it there. Odenovitz. And yet again, it's Sergio Batista who came away with the ball. And Maradona splits free. The gaps open up again in West Germany's defending. Burachaga, 1-0 Argentina. Nine minutes into the second half. That's what they've come to see. He's the man they've come to see. A twist and a turn, and a cross that was measured for Burachaga, arriving, facing the goal, to ram it under Eldner. Although we didn't see it on the replay, I think you've got to give a lot of credit to Baptista, who played the ball through to Maradona. He waited and waited until the time was exactly right, and then played it through. And then, of course, the man himself here turned her off inside out for the first time in a match. Uh, and we've got an experienced striker on the end of it. So, Burachaga, whose goal won the World Cup in 1986 against West Germany, enjoys facing the same opposition again here. We'll see now what this young West German side really is made of. It's a situation from which Franz Beckenbauer might learn a great deal about his new players. Will they bow to the considerable pressure now of the crowd, having gone a goal down? I think it will also be interesting to see Argentina's attitude really, now they're in goal in front, will they actually go on and try and win it by more or will they sort of sit there and say oh, we've done enough? Well let's hope it's the former. I agree with you there. And here's the score. Well, Ruggieri prepared to join in further forward, that's a good sign. Pedalling again and did enough to divert it behind for the corner but Maradona is now in the mood and Rolf resumes his vigil knowing that one lapse has already been costly by Flugler. Well, that was handball by Mateus. Right in front of the eyes of the linesman. I well must be with something else, isn't it? I was just going to say, Ray, I well remember being in Buenos Aires back in 1978 after they'd won the World Cup in home territory. Such scenes for such a length of time. There was no chance of sleeping for a couple of nights with the noise in the streets. Joyous people in celebration. And leaving politics aside, splendid people to spend any time in their company. It's 
Carlos Bilardo having to run forward to try and make a point. But as Ray Clements was saying in the first half, it's impossible in this din. I wonder how they hear the walkie-talkies. Well, Ruggieri has had his hands full this evening with Jurgen Klinsmann. He's 23 years old, has been in the West German Olympic side. They've got a first taste of international football against Brazil four days ago. In from Herget, Argentina looking to play offside. We saw that in the World Cup as well. Pushing up on a given cue. warming up their substitutes Pedro Troglio down there but here's Klinsmann as he got the legs of Brown who had to step across and got the ball fairly ruled the referee West Germany wouldn't agree with that particularly Klinsmann well, here's Boruchaga away from Rolf but the whistle's gone Pay to watch him warm up with those ball skills. And he signed a new contract, incidentally, with Napoli till 1993, which Ray, I think, might end Fleet Street's obsession with pairing him with Tottenham Hotspur. Well, I think it was, I think it was always really a dream for everybody, but uh, obviously, oh, we see skills like that. <laughs> As you say, uh, the gates would be locked every week if he was coming, but obviously that new contract now has uh, meant that unfortunately we won't see him in this country, I'm sure. It is a measure of the man's skills that he can retain popularity in Britain, despite what happened on a certain occasion in Mexico City some 18 months ago which Peter Shilton has a comment or two I'm sure still to make Yes, well I can, I can remember uh, Diego filling White Hart Lane for Ozzy's testimonial game um, he's, I think he's probably the only player around at the moment who actually put that many people onto a gate um, and uh, to see actually Maradona and Glenn Hoddle play on the same side although they'd never played before was uh, quite a sight Again. Never rule out West Germany. We've learned that over the years. They came from behind, of course, in the World Cup final to suggest that it would go to extra time until Puruchaga then raced away for that memorable winning goal. Reuter in some distress. Both sides have a whole batch of players they can bring on. One hopes this doesn't degenerate into a stop-start affair with players being brought on and off every few minutes of the second half. But Carlos Bilardo clearly wants to make his first change. And Troglio giving his comments. I wonder whether we'll be able to do that with the big match live at Derby on Sunday. Get a word with a player before he comes on as a substitute. I doubt that very much. <laughs>
Mateus with a throw for West Germany, who trail Argentina by one goal to nil. And it's very nearly back on level terms with a snapshot from Olaf Tom. Argentina caught back on their heels then. Perhaps by the delay while the game was restarted with that throw. And another ball has gone missing. Ah, not for long. That was a terrific piece of work by Pompido again. It was a great effort as well from Tom, because it came out of nothing, didn't it? Great shot with the outside of his foot there, and Pompey did, ex ex did extremely well to be in the right position to get a hand to that. So, Pedro Troglio comes into international football for the first time. 22 years old, who plays for River Plate, who were the world club champions in 1986. And he's an easy one to pick out with that mop of hair. Mateus. Nineteen minutes played in the second half. Confirmation of Argentina's substitution. Uh, West Germany do the same and bring on Foda, Frank Foda of Kaiserslautern. He was also used as a substitute against Brazil. He's only 21. Mateus. Schwabel. Foda, who's played 17 times for West Germany at youth level of under 21 caps as well and he faced England at that level in September Stefan Reuter was feeling the effects of the injury Droglia Trying to pass Flugler on the outside. Oh, that's outrageous. On he goes with a little bit of help from Troglio. Well, no wonder, Ray, they're not too interested in, in internationals here when Maradona doesn't come back from Italy. Look no. at this. I mean, that was worth the admission fee alone, wasn't it? I mean, it's amazing, actually, since the goal that, uh, that Rolf really seems to have lost a little bit of confidence in Maradona. Maradona now seems to be getting more and more room. Here he is again, past three, definite free kick. The last contact from Flugler. Rolf was flailing, really, to even get close. Make no mistake about it, Rolf's pedigree in terms of man-for-man -man marking jobs is of the highest quality. The computer detail there on Foda. The facts on Maradona is that he scored 30 times for Argentina. Many of them spectacular strikes from free kicks. Here goes another one that isn't spectacular. Twenty-seven, really, 
his peak years now. West Germany doggedly sticking to their task. Hoping by their industry and application to maybe find a moment of inspiration or perhaps of good fortune to still pull something from this game. Sent on by Toglio. The linesman says go on to Maradona. Herget played him onside. And he almost got ahead of the ball. Didn't quite run and was under his feet when he finally committed himself to the shot. I'm not too sure what he actually tried to do there. I'm not sure actually trying if he tried to shoot when the ball was actually underneath his body, which is a nigh impossibility, or whether he was actually trying to hit somebody on the far post. Foda. Now Mateos. This is where West Germany perhaps badly needs some experience in their build-up. They have looked as the game has developed. A little bit short of genuine ideas at this level. And Klinsmann certainly hasn't had as much service in the second half. Boruchaga. Sensini, Troglio. Argentina trying to pull the man for man marking about. But inevitably, their thoughts are always to look for Maradona, but he helps his teammates by always looking for the ball. There was a little acceleration there, but in the stretch to get in the cross before the ball had run behind, it was overhead. But it was still a conjuring trick down in the corner. Peggett. just said before the Germans are running right out of ideas now and it's uh, the Argentinians are just being very patient in their build-up and just waiting for the right time to actually uh, pounce I think now and you see that's another substitution taking place now waiting for Schwabel to come off for Christian Hochstatter of Borussia Mönchengladbach He's got some football in his blood, really. He's a nephew of the great Helmut Haller, who played in the 66 World Cup final for West Germany and England. Klinsmann and Brown finding the West German making up the ground. Brown, who's played this season in Spain with Real Murcia, having had a pretty unsuccessful time in France for a year after the World Cup final. the ball put out of play by Pompido. And it could well be Burachaga, the injured player. Hochstatter also tasted international football for the first time against Brazil, short burst as a substitute then, and another short burst here. So Boruchaga, who's really been dogged by injury over the past few months, and one hopes that this isn't too serious here. And it was Hochstatter making an early imprint on the game and on Boruchaga. Dario 
Mario Sirisky, who came to Europe last summer and played against Italy in that celebration match in Switzerland. Burachaga is not going to go the full distance, but it doesn't look too serious. Troglio and Savisky, perms are obviously still in fashion in Argentina. Reminds you of Craig Johnson out on the right-hand side there, doesn't it? <laughs> Can he run like Craig Johnston there? And here's a chance. No chance for Maradona to run and no foul given. Olaf Ton. It's Argentina's throw, no doubt about that. When West Germany get Rudy Voller fit and Klaus Alofs available, Pierre Barsky will come into the mix as well. Obviously, they'll be more of a force to reckon with in the European Championships, right? Well, I think they proved that when they played against England, didn't they? Obviously, England had one of those off nights, but having said that, the West Germans looked very organised, uh, not only defensively, but also from an attacking point of view as well. They looked very dangerous, and uh, I'm sure that although we're not seeing the best from them at this present moment in time, by the time the European Championships come along, then uh, they'll be a stiff proposition for anybody. Mateus Foda. Actually, Maradona saying here that he thought West Germany were the joint best team in Europe with England. Which That's is nice, a nice to hear. Compliment, yes. Let's hope we can prove that in the summer. Or maybe even better. Curler. And Batista for the umpteenth time doing that ball winning job in Argentina's midfield. But here's Christian Hochstatter. Valdano's lasting the pace well. Savisky certainly part of the new generation for Argentina. Must always be tempting for coaches to be sentimental about teams that win World Cups and keep those players together for uh, as long as possible, maybe too long sometimes. Well, I think that's uh, <coughs> where the good coaches are separated from the great coaches, isn't the great coaches move players on before they get past their best. And uh, I think, uh, you know, obviously this is uh, what's happening in Argentina now at the moment. Troglio. Can he get the better here of Flugler? It's a free kick to Argentina. Only the three men from the starting lineup in Mexico City not on duty tonight. Olati Cochea, Giusti, who would have played but failed a late fitness test, and Enrique. But the latter use of the substitutes reflecting Carlos Bilardo's belief in the younger players where well, they're massed in the middle now for Maradona's free kick Brown some 12 minutes left no time for any risks to be taken at the back, but most of the crowd here would still love to see Argentina embroider their performance with a second goal. And maybe that's the feeling for Carlos Pilado as well.
linesman making up his mind and it's Argentina's ball I don't think he was totally sure it's been a gathering of the clans really for Argentina for the players for the fans and certainly the second half has been vastly more entertaining Tom Brown who was a hero and almost a villain in the World Cup final when he stayed on with a damaged shoulder and suddenly West Germany started to win all sorts of balls in the air around the goal that he was defending Jose Luis Brown but he did score that vital first goal for Argentina in Mexico City and Herget who scored one or two himself four in fact in 30 games for West Germany Curler certainly time for some West German adventure here Flugler Brown doing the defending Flugler getting some length into the throw but no one prepared to meet it for West Germany Maradona just neatly keeping things going it's not always the spectacular from him. Troglio. Pulled back by Plugler. It's amazing when you watch German size. No matter, no matter what the, the timing of the game, no matter what the scoreline is at the time, they never change their way of play. And here we are in the last 10 minutes of the game. And, uh, you know, you would think that they'll try and get a goal back somehow by being a little bit more adventurous. But they're still playing exactly the same way. And uh, hoping somewhere, as they have done so many times in the past, that a chance will create itself uh, and they'll get the equaliser. And remember, against Brazil last Saturday, they did equalise in the last minute. That's right, and as we saw at the start of the show, it was a spectacular equaliser as well. Kuchofo. Troglio. A little wedge ball forward by Maradona. And Baldano forcing an arrow which Savisky pounces on from Kurla. West Germany scrambled away with Ildner flailing really to try and get back. As Savisky nipped in on the back pass but here's Mateus and he's a superb crosser of the ball and just as you say that it's the way for all commentators he puts one into the stand but this was the moment at the other end when Savisky beat Ildner Baldano was chasing in a little wearily now understandably her get cleared. Into the final five minutes. Burachaga's goal, the difference between the two sides. Troglio from Maradona. went in sternly then but Troglio showed great resistance and the tall Bodo Ilkner well favoured by the height of the cross and Baldano is going hunting the ball with an appetite for a man who's not played at this level for such a long time we look back here at what was really a two-footed tackle, first of all, by Maradona. Then Herget was waving away with his right foot. And Troglio did very well indeed to make some space for himself. That 
Francesca Dertissia. Limbering up. A front player. You'd think it would be Baldano who'd come off, wouldn't you? He's done extremely well, as you say, to have lasted the game. And uh, although he's still chasing around, he's, uh, he's looking tired when he's doing it, that's a certainty. Well, Ruggieri's not looking tired. And that's a corner. A great late effort by the centre-back. was a scorer, I think it was against South Korea in one of the early World Cup games. And he'll want to stay forward. Marvellous clearance by Flugler. Very confident in his left foot. Maradona. And Ton did what really you have to do. Ignore the dips of the shoulder. The changes of direction. Just look at the ball. If that doesn't move, you might get a foot in. It just shows good. how the state of the game has happened, though. And uh, Tom is making a, a tackle in his own 18-yard box. Ray Clements called it perfectly. Jorge Valdano to a very emotional reception. Makes his way off. Oscar D'Artissia, who's 22 now, actually made his debut as a teenager back in 1984 for Argentina, so he's been on the fringe of things for a while, although he missed out on the World Cup itself. <laughs> and how did he get the ball away from him? I suppose Diego could really keep it in that corner for the last two or three minutes if he wanted to. In the case of keep ball, he wants to get in behind them, and he's done so. Troglio, Ruggieri was there. It was good defending by Foda that time, but it was as, as if he wanted to leave Maradona one lasting memory on the match. One of those sinuous runs. is still there he's not going to forget this night in a hurry is he into the final minute West Germany still defending as they've had to do for much of the second half the punch from Ildner back from Batista and Ildner kept his eye on the ball and wasn't distracted by Dertissia, who was very anxious to get involved. Mateus. There's no cups up for offer, but the win itself is enough for the crowd to be celebrating, but hang on a minute, here's Ordenovic. Herget. Still, they want to play it about West Germany. Still, it's the same way forward but hasn't brought them much progress in the second half. Tom. 
who is capable of bewitching a defender or two. And he gets away from Sibiski, but not past Trollio. Curler, maybe a, a shot from distance here. Herget. Detesia, it's opened up for him. Foda gets back. And the end of it all is a tame one. But to be fair to West Germany, they've used these internationals in South America in their own domestic midwinter break as an educating process. And they've certainly given Argentina a game. Tom. Argentina fielding a side of much, much greater international experience. Into the fourth minute now of stoppage time. Argentina have beaten West Germany in Argentina for the first time. A second half goal by Burachaga. No revenge for West Germany for that World Cup final defeat. A final thought from Ray Clements. I think it's been a very interesting game. Obviously, the second half was far better than the first. And uh, obviously, Maradona, we saw more and more of him as the game went on. And we've seen some very exciting young Argentinian players out there have come on as substitute as well, I think. So, obviously, the Germans have got a lot more work to do. But uh, they'll be a far better side when they get Voller and Olofs back into the side. That is an absolute certainty. And it promises to be a night, once again, of celebration in Buenos Aires. A game that the crowd have thoroughly enjoyed. I hope you've enjoyed it at home as well. And it's finished. Argentina 1, West Germany 0.